This is it, boys. And then Peg lifts the Brabazon's front wheel after only a... Nope, that's not the sound of a plane taking off. That is the sound of my 13-inch MacBook Pro trying to render a video. It's fighting for its life. I've had this beautiful machine for about five years now. And honestly, I've really put it through its paces. I used it throughout uni to do 3D CAD modeling, Simulink, MATLAB, and all my coding assignments. At a point, I was even running Windows operating system on it. And it actually managed to do all these tasks quite well. My biggest issue at that time was actually storage. This computer has only 128 gigs of storage. So anytime I wanted to use an app, I had to uninstall another one. So it was a bit frustrating. But other than that, I didn't have any real complaints. It's also very portable. Anytime I wanted to travel or go somewhere, I could just toss in my bag or my suitcase and I'm ready to go. But all this was before I started video editing. That's when I really started to push the limits of this machine. I'm tired. Huh? I'm tired. It would take me so long to edit a video just because 70% of the time is me waiting for the computer to shut up and just start responding. And then when I'm finally done editing, it takes the computer another four to six hours to actually export and render the video. So if I want to upload a video on Monday, I have to be done editing on Sunday night. So I allow the computer to render the video overnight so I can post on Monday. And that's basically how I've been posting videos on YouTube for the past year or so. I'm a huge advocate for starting with what you have. Most of the videos I posted on YouTube were shot on my iPhone and then edited on this laptop. But towards the end of last year, I'd saved enough to buy myself a new camera. And I've gradually been shooting a lot more of my recent videos on my camera. As you'd expect, the video quality is better, but that also means it requires a lot more computational power to edit these videos. And hence, editing on this laptop has just been a lot more frustrating recently. So that's why I bought this base model M1 MacBook Pro a couple of weeks ago. And honestly, I got it at a really good price because Apple just released the new ones. But as you'd imagine, before I bought this laptop, I watched a ton of YouTube reviews. But there was one issue with a lot of the reviews I was watching. They were heavily focused on like Geekbench scores, performance, fancy graphs, things like that. But none of that was really relevant or resonating with me. Like I couldn't really picture what a 20% increase in CPU performance is. All I really wanted to know was, how does it really feel to edit on these machines? So let me show you. So this is basically what it feels like to edit on my 13 inch MacBook Pro. I'll just show you guys, first I'll show you guys how playthrough goes. So if I just click play. There's like a new text out of me that goes every single day. As you can see, it's a bit choppy, like not really a bit, but it's quite choppy. And this is how it usually plays through. So it's, it just gets a bit frustrating when you actually want to edit and react and like pick out particular frames. It can be a bit frustrating. And this is like a video that I've already edited. So it's already rendered this a bit and it's still this slow. Another thing is playthrough. So if I wanted to like just scroll through to look for a particular frame, like it is very, very choppy, which isn't too nice. And then if you want to add like things like effects or transitions, those also take like quite a while to render. Also, this is like quite bad because I'm also like screen recording. So sometimes it, it can play, I, like I press play right now. And so sometimes it plays a bit more fluently, but sometimes it's just choppy like this. And sometimes it just doesn't do anything. So it can get, it, it, it frustrates me quite a lot. And then the first time I actually used the M1, like, let me show you guys. Okay, so this is the same video, but on my M1 MacBook Pro. I'm just going to click play and show you how, like, smooth it is. Like, no choppiness. Everything just flows. It's so, like, the first time I used this thing, I promise you, I almost cried. I was like, there's no way, like, there's no way it's this easy, right? Like, there's no way it just flows this beautiful. So, like... Yeah, it's crazy. It's been crazy. And also, like, if you want to scroll through, like, you could go as as zoomed in as possible. And you could pick out each each frame you wanted without hooking. You could go forward, back. I could add, like, a transition. Let me just look for a little transition, like, um, crossfade. Cross dissolve. Like, if I added a transition... And click play boom like it just okay it stopped a bit but like it's still flowing a lot better than my comp my former computer so the difference is clear i just like it's so sick yeah it's unbelievable how, how strong and how huge a difference it is 
and I love it so much. So yeah, that's really what I wanted to highlight in this video, a real world example of what the difference is like. So if you're thinking of picking a new laptop for editing, the base model 14 inch M1 MacBook Pro is definitely more than enough power. But if you're looking for an alternative, the new M2 Mac minis are such a good buy right now and they are priced very well. But yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you know the vibe. Stay light and stay G safe.